Now, Billy Wilder seemed to be very interested and curious about me. He would bump into me on the way to the commissary and kind of say, hey, I want to talk to you. He said, uh, what are you taking at UCLA? What subjects interest you? Where did you grow up? Uh, who was your father? He was a doctor. Who was your mother? She was a school teacher. Aha. Uh -huh. So what he had in the back of his mind that he wanted, he wanted to create Betty Schaefer. And Betty Schaefer was an aspiring writer. She was a reader at the studio. So she read everybody else's scripts and, and, and diagnosed them. But she wanted to, to write a script and knew she couldn't quite do it on her own. So there was this writer that interested her and she thought perhaps if she could work with him, she would become successful. Everyone in this film, by the way, is an opportunist. Anyway, I think what Billy wanted most was for him, for me, to be me. He wanted somebody who could be articulate, knew how to be, that was going to school, was getting educated, and that he also, doctor's daughter from the Midwest, my, my um, nickname in college was Wholesome Olson. <laughs> so now you get a feeling that he wanted a strong person. He wanted somebody that you could believe might possibly be a writer someday. And so he cast me. Can you believe it? And uh, I read the script. And it was amazing. And I, I, can I share with the audience something? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, OK, you're here, my <laughs> uh, Well, first of all, I want to, just, to continue what I was saying was that um, Edith Head, who was head of the fashion department, the you know, wardrobe department, the fabulous person with her glasses and her bangs and she was darling and she kept coming up with a wardrobe for me to wear and Billy and I on the set looked at the designs and we said it's not Betty Schaefer so finally Billy said to me Nancy I just kind of like what you wear here every time you visit us just wear your own clothes <laughs> so when you watch this this wardrobe is not really great because I didn't, have, I didn't know where to shop. I was going to school, I was so busy. But he wanted me to just simply be me. Wholesome, wholesome. And somebody who was strong. And that, I think, is what he wanted. And what he hopefully got. <laughs> well, you were nominated for an Oscar, so I think he definitely got what he wanted as did the audience. I hope so. Before we watch the film, I guess the most searing question in my mind is, why do you think this film has survived and has achieved this, the cult status that it has? Well, it's such an interesting thing. What makes these films survive over the century, I mean, over the decades? Uh, this film, Billy Wilder, by the way, just let me just quickly tell you, you also an extra, understanding. He was born in Germany during the Nazi era. And his mother and his grandmother were murdered in the Nazi camp Auschwitz. So he came from a reality about the world that to, to lie about anything, to deceive, was not in his DNA. So this film is telling the truth. It tells about Hollywood, about movie stars at that time. And they were designed to be larger than life. They, every, if, if you were beautiful, they made you three times as beautiful. 
if you were had the greatest figure, you were, of course, exploited to have the best figure in the entire world. It, for a movie star, for a human being, to be exploited like that, to be exaggerated, it's, it's Marilyn Monroe is the perfect example of how destructive that was. She was made larger than she really was, and she didn't know how to adapt to that. So what Billy was doing was telling the truth about what motion pictures and movie stars really are. They are a commodity. They are hyped to sell. And boy, we understand that today in our own culture, how things are hyped in an exaggerated way to sell. And then, when they become a certain age, they're not as interesting and they're thrown away. So this process has a, an underlying um, criminality to it almost. It's the destruction of people. It's taking them, take, in, inflating them, and then throwing them away. Bill Holden, by the way, the first person they wanted was Montgomery Clift. That would have who been said, Who said yes and then changed his mind. changed his mind, yeah. right. And it's a good thing, because it would have been a different movie. Uh, but Bill was under contract to Paramount. He had done Golden Boy and Our Town, those beautiful classics. And then he went to the Army, and he got kind of lost. And when he came back, his career was, he was doing kind of minor roles. They were not really starring or interesting. And he started to drink too much. He was in a marriage that was falling apart. He was a desperate human being. And so was Joe Gillis, the character that he plays in the movie. He also had that incandescent quality <coughs> that movie stars have. It, it's very, it's hard to describe. The camera gets it. They just pick it up. But that's a, something he had. So he's a desperate man who is basically made for the silver screen. And Billy Wilder, leave it to him. He got it. Anyway, um, I could go on and on and on.